Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about sharpening a ball nose end mill. There's two main setups and we'll get into them in just a minute, but for now let's take a look at uh, how these things are designed. So of course it goes without saying, I suppose, there's the ball on the end of the end mill. And um, what I want you to notice here is how it all comes to nothing right in the middle. So there's some clearance ground away here, there's some clearance ground away here. They perfectly meet at the middle where there's no missing material. This angle is coming back this way. This angle is opposite, it's coming back this way. And they also meet exactly right at the middle. Now, I don't have a way to do that, but I have a way of handling ball nose end mills. Essentially what I'm gonna do is treat it like a two flute slot drill where one tooth comes well past center and the other ends well shy of center and it'll leave me a gap in the middle where I can transition from the one clearance angle to the opposite clearance angle. In case you missed that video or you're interested in seeing it, I'll put a link here somewhere uh, near the end of the video. There's two setups we're gonna to do today for this and we're doing this work today on our KO Lee uh, <laughs> B2060 Universal Tool and Cutter Grinder. I've done this first setup here you know, off camera because it uh, takes some time. It's a little bit on the fiddly side and I wanted this to go as quickly as possible for you guys, but I will tell you exactly what I've done here. I'm gonna use this slot drill to explain what I've done. So I've got uh, basically this face here dialed in perfectly horizontal on the ball nose that's in the machine, uh, which is kind of hard to see. That's why I'm using this as an example. I've used my height gauge to set that up. I've also used my height gauge to get my wheel at center height. Now, I had to start with my height gauge from the table and then come up to the slot drill and then reverse this upside down so I could set my wheel. So I am a few thou above where I think my zero should be just because all that transferring of measurements from the original measurement could have added up to some error. I'm going to go ahead and rough this out and it wouldn't surprise me if before we're done we have to drop our wheel head height down just a little to get us exactly where center is. But once it's roughed in, we can kind of feel that out as we go. Well, that's finished now. I've given myself a nice generous uh, gap here between where the two Clearance angles are going to be, this tooth passes just past center and this tooth stops way shy of center and that's going to give me a, a zone that I can work in to create this radius and transition from the one clearance angle over to the opposite clearance angle. This setup's all done. Now this was a absolute boatload of dialing. Um, I had to get this way on my radius fixture running true to the center line of my table as well as this fixture true to that same center line as well. And the reason is, as we're working on this, uh, we're gonna be creating the outer diameter of it. So we're doing the ball at the end and we're sharpening the sides all in one setup. So super important that everything was running true to the crossways, uh, both for, for this sharpening of the sides and also just as I adjusted my radius in, as I dialed my radius in, if I was cocked off one way or another, it would have thrown all the readings out, it wouldn't have worked. So super important that I do that. I do have this little, super small little pointer here, exactly bang on center. And the reason I needed it to be so small was it has to land on this edge, just in front of the cutting edge, and it has to follow this all the way around as we sharpen this thing. And uh, I had to actually make this out of high-speed steel so that it would be rigid enough not to flex on me. Back to this notch that we put in earlier, what I'm going to do is I can come in with both the pointer and the wheel in that notch so it's not going to be touching my cutting tool. And then I can begin to rotate past the wheel once I get my height set. Of all the tool and cutter grinding videos we've done, this one by far is going to require the most feel. And the problem with it, well, there's a couple of things about this. One is that when the pointer is touching right at the center of the tool, I have almost unlimited torque over that point. So my feel has to be incredibly light, but it has to be just heavy enough so that I do in fact 
rotate through and follow the, 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 the tooth face as we go around corners. Another point that this that's going to be super challenging is that as I transition from doing the radius to doing the lengthwise cut, you have to avoid a clunk as you hit the stop that makes you go straight across afterwards. And so a lot of feel there too. Now I don't have a wheel guard on here today. I tried, but there's simply no way with all this going on right here that I could get one in there. And so I'm going to do my best to stay out of this uh, radial zone of death. I'm going to run the wheel backwards for this. And yes, that'll push a bit of a burr up onto the cutting edge, in front of the cutting edge. The reason I'm doing that is because the feel here is so light, I don't want the wheel influencing my tool and rotating it down into the, into the wheel further because what that would do is it would also go deeper and it would just become a mess. So here goes nothing. Let's give her a try. So I've checked this thing all over for clearance and I'm happy with the, the clearance that's on there. Now, if you wanted to, you could put a secondary on there uh, basically by maintaining the center height of your pointer but lowering the height of your wheel. That would put you on a different angular face of the wheel and give you a different clearance. But this guy just needed a lick. It wasn't too bad. I've got plenty of clearance. So I'm not gonna to torment myself anymore with this today. We're gonna to try it out and see how it works. Here it is out of the machine. You can see we've got a reasonably nice consistent radius there. There is a little witness of when I transition from radius to uh, straight when I cut the edges in. That was pretty much unavoidable. Got another one here. It's actually a little deeper on this side. Uh, it's really not gonna affect the way this works. It's going to give us that nice rad, and I don't suspect that that'll actually leave uh, a mark in the surface finish. That seems to be working pretty well. I mean, in this mill, anything that size or bigger is going to really going to really shake things up so I'm not surprised by that at all okay. 
Well, there's our radius slot. I'm pretty happy with that. It's looking pretty decent. Tool cut, no problem. There was no, uh, you know, rubbing. I checked every cutting edge uh, before I tried it to make sure there was clearance everywhere. So I was pretty sure that was going to work out. So that's going to do it for today's video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, sharpening of a ball-nosed end mill. See you next time.